Hello YouTube and welcome to the fourth video of my Christmas marathon. Today we're talking about the Bretons of High Rock. This video is heavily inspired on a wiki post by Bladesmaster Joffrey, a good friend of mine who makes a lot of posts on the wiki and write and writes his own articles on lore. In the descriptions and in the comments section of this video you can find more of his work, which is in my opinion really good, so give it a read. He gave me permission to use his piece as the basis of my work and unfortunately I ended up using almost only his piece and some other things, but mostly his piece, and since it's just very complete on history. So again, a huge thanks to Blades Master Joffrey and really go look at, uh, go check out his work, it's really good. With that behind us, let's kick off with the video. So first, let's talk about the Bretons as a race. The Bretons were conceived out of a mix of the ancient Aldmer clans who settled in what later became High Rock, also known as the Derani clan, and the local Needs that lived there. This is because of the good relationship of the ancient Needs of High Rock and the Derani. While yes, in their society there was an elven supremacy complex, the Needs were in fact second class citizens. But the Needs actually adapted to that, they got pre along pretty well, even with the Needs breeding with the Aldmer, which created the Bretons. They got along so well that even when the Nords invaded High Rock to kill the Elves, most Bretons fought with the Dereni against the Nords. Because of all this, the Bretons have always been fittingly known as the Manmer, a mix between Elf and Human. Apparently some of them could even be mistaken for Elves, since when the Nords invaded High Rock they mistakenly thought that the Bretons were Elves and even killed a lot of them in raids actually intended for Elves. The Bretons, which... Uh, which left to themselves have always been infamously at each other's throats. High Rock has always been dotted with a patched landscape where every small town is the capital of another kingdom, each drunk man is his own king and where every street ends the border of another kingdom begins. This is of course a lame joke but almost through the entire history of Tamriel High Rock has been the scene of a lot of small petty kingdoms fighting for control over the entire region. One of the only times in the history of High Rock when they were actually pretty united was during the Second Era in the Daggerfall Covenant. This came to be when the Reachman Empire invaded High Rock during the Second Era. The Bretons were very unprepared and the city of Camelorn was sacked, Evermore was burned to the ground and Wayrest besieged. I actually told you of this story in greater detail in my, in my video on the Reachman Empire. There I also covered the Reachman Emperors or the Longhouse Emperors in my video on the Riemann Empire. So you should take a look at that if you want. Either way, the invading of, of the Reachmen of the Longhouse Empire were halted and defeated at Daggerfall. This made the kings of the larger kingdoms of High Rock finally stop fighting each other, but instead realize that they could accomplish a lot more as allies and they started a military alliance. The great kingdoms promised that if one would be attacked the others would come to aid. This covenant then flourished and the Bretons of High Rock became very wealthy at this time of chaos around all of Tamriel. This covenant eventually grew into a true alliance and at one point a noble called Emmerich became king of Weyrest as a result of an old dying king and Emmerich's great services to the kingdom of Weyrest. Emmerich then caused for problems within the covenant as later in his life he had promised to marry the princess of Shornhelm. However, he had fallen with love with the, in love with the princess of Sentinel and he actually wanted to marry her. So, Shornham felt betrayed and attacked Weyrest as a result. This was the first true test of the Dever Daggerfall Covenant. And it actually survived. It proved that the covenant could work because all the other kingdoms, including even Sentinel and Orsinium, came to the aid of Weyrest. And the Rothgar region was eventually gifted to Orsinium and recognized as official Orsinium land by the entire covenant. This action proved to all the kingdoms of High Rock that an alliance could actually work, that everyone could prosper under the rule of an alliance. And all the other kingdoms of High Rock, even the small ones, joined the covenant, now under the rule of one high king, Emmerich. The kingdoms wanted a new empire, one that could provide for everyone's safety, where everyone would have a fair say. So under the lead of High King Emmerich they marched into Cyril, starting the events of Elder Scrolls Online, where everyone is fighting around. Uh, 
on, a, on Cyrodiil, which is the PvP area. Eventually, the Covenant fell apart, and during the wars of, uh, of Tiber Septim, they were as disunited as before. And when Tiber Septim invaded High Rock, most kingdoms accepted this rule pretty fast, wanting a new stable empire where everyone could benefit. The new imperial governor of High Rock drew up a new map, and actually resolving a lot of ancient land disputes and bringing some stability to the High Rock region. However, High Rock always remained divided under the, under the Septim Empire, with each kingdom still having almost autonomous rule over itself and having their own small armies, trades and fortunes. A great feat in Breton history under the Septim Empire is when they managed to beat the Cameron Usurper, at a time when the Empire stood weak and unable to protect High Rock against the forces of the Usurper. This was one of the rare stances of unity of High Rock under the Septim Empire, because while the situation is less divided in High Rock in the 3rd and 4th era, High Rock is still far from a united province. In modern times, after the Warp of the West, or the Miracle of Peace as some in High Rock call it, High Rock is made up uh, of five large kingdoms, governing High Rock instead of a thousand small, smaller kingdoms. The most recent event in High Rock history that we know of is the invasion of Wayrest. The prosperous part of the Kingdom of Wayrest was at that point far behind us. It was in the year 188 of the 4th era. Wayrest was at that time overrun and captured by pirates known as the Corsairs. The Corsairs are probably pirates from the Abyssinian Sea, likely Redguards. But their attack wasn't culturally motivated, they just came to plunder the city and then re realized that Wayrest was rich enough to support them for an extended period of time instead of just being a raid target. So they started in uh, they captured Wayrest and started a Corsair state. However, this state is somehow still part of the Empire, since in general the Empire does not really care who rules the land as long as you listen to the Imperial authority. And probably the Corsairs would see what the benefit it would be to have their own rich state even when it's under control of the Empire. I even have my own speculation about this whole event, one that doesn't is of any source and isn't canon, but still fun to think about. What we know of the last years of the true kingdom of Wayrest is that it was ruled by a quite unpopular king, King Barinja. It is said that his reign was shaky at best and he could not control his own kingdom. Therefore, a conspiracy theory has formed into my head. What if the Empire was actually involved in the attack by the Corsairs? I mean, isn't it weird that a band of pirates we really don't much know much about actually captures an entire kingdom of Wayrest? I have my own suspicions about it that the Empire in some way initiated the Corsairs to attack Wayrest so they can have their own state as long as they listen to Imperial authority. In exchange the Empire would leave the city maybe not properly defended and have the Penitus Oculatus secretly aiding the attack of, of the Corsair so that the Empire could have a local uh, local loyal ally in high, Central High Rock. It would explain why none of the Breton kings so far has taken big skill actions against a Corsair state. And think about the Imperial Legion. Ulfric starts his uprising and immediate deployment. And Skyrim isn't all that rich really, only Solitude is very rich as we know of in a white run, which remain under Imperial control. And think about High Rock, a rich and wealthy city, one of the wealthiest in, uh, entire, in the entire kingdom, gets raided and nothing happens. The Imperial Legion doesn't do anything. This leads me to believe that actually the Empire was somehow behind it, uh, behind the attack, initiating the Corsairs and just promising them they could have their own state as long as they listen to Imperial authority. However, it's kind of far-fetched and, you know, it's fun of th to think about. I mean... I could, honestly, I could honestly see why. I mean, if they would all ally with the Empire, then the Empire would have a strong pirate fleet as an ally, one strong enough to actually capture a kingdom at its disposal to wreck eventual Old Mary ships at the sea, and the Corsairs would have themselves their, their own country to rule, and probably payment for their soldiers by the Empire instead of having to plunder everything. But again, none of this is in any way canon, and I could be completely and utterly wrong. Anyway... Thank you for watching, this was it. Again, look at Grandmaster Joffrey's or Blademaster Joffrey's as he's known on the wiki, articles. His articles are truly amazing and he has sourced it very properly. So if you want to become more of a lore buff, read his articles. And then, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe. If you want personal contact with me, my Discord and Instagram are in the description. 
My Patreon is also in the description if you want to support me in a more personal way. Patrons get all sorts of small benefits like getting access to discarded scripts in PDF format and also uh, like some posts from me and you get and your name is start at the end of every video every lore video not every update video so yeah again like the video if you liked it and um, i'll be on my way to create the last video of the christmas marathon tomorrow have a nice day and i'll see you tomorrow